A man woke up one day in a police station, confused, disoriented, and covered in blood. Kenneth Parks, a 23-year-old from Ontario, Canada, had no memory of the night before. Turns out he'd driven 14 miles to his in-law's place while asleep, attacked them in their house, and he strangled his father-in-law and stabbed his mother-in-law to death. Parks got back in his car and drove straight to a nearby police station and confessed, turning himself in, stating, I think I've just killed two people. The jury ultimately found him not guilty by reason of automatism, meaning his actions were involuntary due to sleep. The thing is, sleep isn't as simple as we think. For something we spend about a third of our lives doing, we still don't know much about it. 25 years. That's how long the average person spends unconscious, slipping in and out of something we barely understand. Every night you close your eyes and your mind disconnects. Time jumps forward. Sometimes you dream, sometimes you don't. But every morning you wake up and somehow you're still you. But where were you in between? No one really knows. Sleep isn't the same every day and the experience is different for everyone. Some people fall asleep and wake up feeling like no time passed at all. Others dream entire lifetimes in a matter of minutes, experiencing emotions so intense they wake up crying, laughing or terrified. A college student reported living a span of 10 years in one dream, where he met a woman, married her, had kids and built a full life until he noticed an odd lamp which shattered the illusion. He woke up on the sidewalk surrounded by people, minutes after being knocked out by a football player. Sometimes we see vivid hallucinations as we drift off. Some wake up gasping, heart pounding, convinced something was in the room with them. Others slip into states between wakefulness and dreaming, hypnagogic hallucinations, or the strange flashes of images and sounds right before sleep have been recorded for centuries. The artist Salvador Dali used them to inspire his surreal paintings, keeping a key in his hand as he dozed off so that when he dropped it, he'd wake up and capture the bizarre visions before they faded. Even Vincent van Gogh once said, I dream my painting and then I paint my dream. But while most people drift between these states harmlessly, there are those who barely sleep at all. Fatal familial insomnia is one of the rarest and most horrifying disorders known to science. A genetic mutation slowly erodes the brain's ability to sleep, leading to hallucinations, paranoia, and eventually death. The most famous case is that of Silvano, an Italian man who, in the late 1980s, started having trouble sleeping. Within months, he couldn't sleep at all. His body shut down piece by piece until, after months of consciousness without rest, he died. There is no cure, no treatment. If you inherit the mutation, it's just a matter of time. We need sleep to survive, but we still don't know exactly why. Some theories suggest sleep is crucial for memory consolidation. Brain scans show that during sleep, neurons fire in the same patterns as when we're awake, almost like replaying the day's events. Others argue it's about clearing waste from the brain. Studies have shown that cerebrospinal fluid, the one surrounding our brain and spinal cord, flushes out toxins more efficiently during deep sleep there's even a theory that sleep evolved as a survival mechanism, keeping us out of harm's way when it was too dark to hunt or defend ourselves. But if sleep is purely biological, why does it feel so strange? Midday naps, for example, often leave us feeling weirdly exhausted. There's a disorienting quality to waking up in the afternoon, as if you were in the wrong reality. This happens because your body's internal clock, or circadian rhythm, is designed to follow a 24-hour cycle aligning with the day-night pattern. When you sleep at irregular times, especially in the afternoon, your circadian rhythm gets thrown off balance. Your brain gets confused, unsure whether it's time to be active or sleep, leading to that odd feeling that time doesn't quite match up. That's why you might wake up from an afternoon nap feeling like you've lost track of time, unsure if you've been asleep for minutes or hours. It's a small disruption to your body's rhythm, and suddenly the world around you feels just a little bit out of sync. Sleep paralysis is another mystery. You wake up, but your body doesn't. You try to move or scream, but nothing happens. A presence looms nearby, sometimes at the foot of your bed, sometimes right on top of you. It's been recorded for centuries. In Japan, it's called kanashibari, the feeling of being bound by invisible forces. In Newfoundland, it's the old hag, a spirit that sits on your chest, stealing your breath. The scientific explanation is simple. Your brain wakes up before your body, causing temporary paralysis. But that doesn't explain why so many people across different cultures and eras 
see the same shadowy figures watching them. And then there are sleepwalkers. Some just wander. Others drive cars, cook food, have full conversations, all while unconscious. In 2008, a man named Brian Thomas strangled his wife in his sleep, believing he was fighting off an intruder. He woke up to find her dead beside him, with no memory of what had happened. Dreams are another part of the enigma. Some of them feel more real than reality itself. People report recurring dreams of places they've never been but somehow recognize. Faces they've never seen but swear they know. The sensation that a dream is watching them rather than the other way around. In some cases, dreams follow a narrative, like chapters in a book. Yet, most of us forget our dreams soon after waking. In fact, most dreams are forgotten unless they are written down. It is often said that five minutes after the end of a dream, we have forgotten 50% of its content, and 10 minutes later, we have forgotten 90%. Dream researchers estimate that around 95% of all dreams are forgotten entirely upon awakening. One theory, known as reverse learning, suggests that dreaming serves as a mechanism for the brain to discard unnecessary information. According to this model, during rapid eye movement, or REM sleep, the brain sifts through the day's experiences and weakens or eliminates irrelevant neural connections. Studies have also found that people with higher levels of openness to experience, creativity and fantasy proneness are more likely to remember their dreams. Additionally, those who have a greater interest in dreams, higher anxiety levels and better sleep quality tend to have improved dream recall. Nightmares, however, seem to always carry a kind of leftover terror, as if they were warnings, messages from somewhere deep in the subconscious. At least that's what people have been told for centuries. People experience nightmares that feels more like a warning than a bad dream, a shadow or figure watching looming, and they wake up shaken, breathing hard, heart racing. Some even wake up physically hurt as if their body was fighting something, reacting to some unknown threat. Carl Jung believed dreams weren't random at all, but messages from the subconscious, fragments of thoughts and emotions trying to communicate in ways our waking minds can't understand. A dream that is not interpreted is like a letter that is not read. But not everyone agreed. Sigmund Freud, often called the father of psychoanalysis, saw dreams as something even deeper, a gateway into our hidden desires and repressed thoughts. Dreams are the royal road to the unconscious, he wrote, believing that within them lay clues to our innermost fears, wishes and unresolved conflicts. But if that's true, what about the people who never dream? Some people, or 2.7 to 6.5% of the population, barely dream at all, or at least can't recall any of it. So, if sleep is just rest, just the brain shutting down for maintenance, why do some people dream of events before they happen, later experiencing deja vu so strong they swear they've lived that moment before? Why did the dying report vivid dreams of loved ones coming to guide them? Why do coma patients wake up recalling experiences from when they were supposedly unconscious? And why is sleep so eerily close to death? Philosophers have drawn this connection for centuries. Aristotle called sleep the brother of death. Edgar Allan Poe described sleep as little slices of death. And maybe it is a brief disconnection from the world and ourselves. When we sleep, we're unaware of the passage of time, unaware of our surroundings, unaware of ourselves. In a way, we're temporarily erased from existence, just to be brought back again, as though nothing happened. Every night you disappear, your consciousness fades, time skips, and every morning, without fail, you wake up again, back in the same body, in the same mind, picking up exactly where you left off. Except, what if, one day, you don't? The thought lingers in the back of the mind. Most of us ignore it, but there are people who know when it's coming, there are cases of individuals who hours before bed tell their loved ones they won't be waking up. Just a calm, matter-of-fact statement. And then they go to sleep and never wake up. It's called sudden unexplained nocturnal death syndrome, a phenomenon where otherwise healthy people, often young men, die in their sleep with no warning. The cause remains elusive. Some point to potential heart conditions, but science is still trying to make sense of this phenomenon. But maybe it never will. Because for all our advancements, for all our technology, we still don't fully understand the thing we do every single night. Maybe that's why sleep has always felt so mysterious. Because in a way, it's more than just rest. It's a reset, a brief escape, a moment where everything stops. And when we wake up, the world feels just a little lighter. 
As E. Joseph Kosman put it, the best bridge between despair and hope is a good night's sleep.